It looks like a TikTok or Instagram clone at first, but here is a twist. Every single video is AI generated. It's endless AI slope. The app runs on top of Sora 2, their new AI video model, and it's seriously next level, way ahead of the competition. It's already number one most downloaded app and it's invite only. And it's free. Sadly, OpenAI had to start censoring stuff, but more on that later. The quality though, insane. You gotta see it for yourself. Honestly feels better than Vilos free. It gets physics and human anatomy weirdly well, and no needs for fancy prompts. It can edit clips on its own, switch up camera angles while keeping characters consistent, build a storyline, even write original music. Too good to be true. You can upload your own face and generate AI videos with yourself in them. Or even let others use your face, like Altman did. But you cannot upload someone else's image, though they thought about it. You have to verify your identity, kinda like signing up for a finance app, and only then you can generate avatars using your face. So, how did OpenAI get it to generate stuff this good? Simple. They basically fed it the whole internet. Like someone typed to generate gameplay of Cyberpunk 2077 with a basilisk tank and a panem. Boom! Steady, it created legit-looking cyberpunk gameplay. But the wild part, that's one of those tiny side quests no one even remembers. And Sora remembered the location, the gang names, even voices lines. All without being told. At first, OpenAI was like, if no one told us not to do it, then it's okay. So yeah, if Pixar didn't complain, you could make Pixar-style characters. But a few days later, they changed their mind and were like, alright, we don't wanna get sued. And now almost every other prompt shows a warning. Remember how six months ago Zack was personally going full Pokemon mode, scooping up every AI developer with a $10 million offers? Yeah, that's when he poached Alexander Levank, the CEO of Scale AI, the $15 billion company, not some random startup. And wanna guess why? To announce. Announce AI slope. We are partnered with the Mid Dawny and Black Forest Labs while we continue developing our own models behind the scenes. Meanwhile, Oldman just sitting there like this. Damn, that was smooth. By the way, the app doesn't work for me at all. Keeps bugging me to turn on Bluetooth and connect the glasses, which I don't have. Like, why would you even put an AI video feed inside Smart Glasses app? Maybe so you don't get bored during meetings? Anyway, feels like they are trying to split AI-generated content from the real human-made stuff and see which one wins the engagement game. What do you think? Will AI slop take over the world? Honestly, I'm kinda sure it will. The quality of AI video is just next level now, not even close to what we had two years ago. And it's getting harder and harder to tell what's real. Meanwhile, starting this December, Meta will use your chats with their AI chatbots to target you with ads across Instagram and Facebook. Yep, straight up. You are the product, no shame about it. And nope, you cannot opt out. If you use it, you get tracked. So yeah, next time someone says, oh my god, we talked about buying a car now, I see car ads everywhere. Just say, yep, that's how it works. It's listening, it's watching, it's not even trying to hide it anymore. Looks like Altman wanted that too, and honestly, it's probably happening. OpenAI just rolled out product shopping inside ChatGPT. Like, you search for the best running shoes, and ChatGPT doesn't just give you ratings and reviews, and it gives you a buy button. Just like Google Shopping, but right in the chat. Right now it's only with Etsy, but Shopify coming soon. Would have been weird if they didn't do this. People trust ChatGPT like crazy. Like it's your expert friend who somehow has a PhD in everything and already read the entire internet just to find you the perfect thing for you. We call this emotional over-reliance. People rely on ChatGPT too much. There's young people who just say like, I can't make any decision in my life without telling ChatGPT everything that's going on. So yeah, it's kind of the perfect place to sell stuff. 
they built in the tech with a Stripe and it's open source. It's called ACP, Agentic Commerce Protocol, like Anthropic MCP but for shopping. Any store or business can plug it into it and sell through AI agents. And any AI agent can use it to help you buy. OpenAI is now the most valuable private company in the world. 500 billion dollars. They passed SpaceX and even TikTok. Wild. But the hottest AI startup in Silicon Valley right now, it's not OpenAI. It's launched just two years ago and already pulls in over 500 million AM. At first glance, it just looks like a job board, but for experts. You sign up and boom, you're offered legit gigs paying a few hundred an hour. The catch? you're training AI agents to do your job, so that eventually people won't be needed for it anymore. Like this one, consulting expert. Hourly pay, four weeks project, fully remote, actual dream setup, 20 hours a week. They pay daily, 100 bucks an hour, plus up to 100% bonus. So yeah, part-time gig nets you around 2K a week. Your task? Train the model to answer like a top-tier management consultant. Design consulting style prompts, review answers, write feedback criteria. So next time someone asks, give me a 10-year strategy like McKinsey would. The AI nails it like an actual McKinsey consultant. Creepy? Kinda. But even you say no, hundreds of other experts are already doing it. Just look how many are on there right now. The company went from zero to ten billion dollars valuation in under two years. They've got 30 employees and average age 22. The Comet, AI browser from Perplexity is now out for everyone and it's free. Cool, thanks, not that exciting anymore. But seriously, it's a big move. It's a full-on browser built on Chromium with a Perplexity baked right in. I just wonder, does Google regret open sourcing Chromium back in the day? This thing doesn't just read web pages, it can interact with them. The AI agent literally sees what you see, summarizes, calculates, analyzes, all that stuff. It can be useful, like say you have 100 friend requests on LinkedIn and you ask Perplexity to go through them and approve them for you. No more clicking through each one. A bunch of folks are heading in this direction, like Cloud for Chrome, which can read pages, scroll through them, fill out forms, and even hit submit. And of course, there is good old Chrome, still holding over 80% of the market, now racing to bolt on AI features too. Mira Murati, ex CTO of OpenAI, finally dropped her new product. Tinker. What is it exactly? And why are VCs throwing $2 billion at it even through there was literally no product, no launch, nothing? Put simply, Tinker is a service that lets you fine-tune open-weight LLMs for your business. Basically, it teaches the model to think and talk like your company. Customer support tone, your legal language, internal knowledge base, how you write, how you sound, all of that. But Wait, isn't that already possible today? Yes, but also no. Right now, most companies just load up a bunch of text and context into the prompt via API to make the model act on brand. But that's expensive because API pricing is based on token in, token out. Fine tuning solves that. Once the model learns your stuff, it becomes part of its brain. Fewer tokens, faster responses, more consistent and predictable, especially at scale. Sure, you could try to fine-tune ChatGPT itself, but you don't get the weights. So your custom model still lives inside OpenAI, and you are fully locked in. Plus, all your data runs through them, not great for compliance. Another option is going fully self-hosted using open weight models. But for that, you need serious infrastructure and a full-stack AI engineering team to pull it off. That's where Tinker comes in. They give you the infrastructure. And you stay in control of your data and training. And, and once your model is trained, you can take it and run it yourself. 
closest vibes to get the AI or data bricks. And now Elon Musk is promising a new kind of Wikipedia, Crocopedia, an open source digital encyclopedia to rival the original one. Why? He thinks Wikipedia is too biased, that it picks and chooses sources and moderates way too heavily. In 2023, he even joked about offering $1 billion if they renamed it to Wikipedia. Classic Elon. But if they are being serious, this is his own data engine, built for training AI and, in his words, understanding the universe. People write and edit articles with the sources. Others can mark them as agree or disagree and add counter sources. The system collects quality signals. And for training models, this is gold. The AI doesn't just read raw text, it learns from evidence backed facts with the trust signals. Just like buying Twitter looked impulsive, but there is usually a strategy behind the chaos. See you.